first I want to thank the City Council President, the Vice President, and the Dean of the City Council for joining us this morning. Uh, this is a, a very important issue. Um, you know, I spent two days uh, last week in D.C. Uh, with other, other mayors from across the country lobbying on behalf of cities, uh, making it clear that uh, we cannot perform the services, provide the services that we need to, to our residents uh, on this, you know, this governance by crisis mentality. Every other month it's another crisis. It does not give our uh, constituents the confidence they need that government is working for them, and it's unnecessary. And that the, the point of sequester was to force the collaboration that mayors have to do every day. If we don't get to kick the can down the road and uh, not figure out how to work together, the stakes are too high. Uh, and we talked about the impact on our most vulnerable, the impact on Title I schools, the impact on um, not just education, public safety, uh, the, the uh, TSA and travel, uh, and how many people would uh, would be impacted because of loss of uh, jobs and, and finances because of the furlough. And we know that all of this, all of this is unnecessary. So um, part of what I'd like us to do is I know that um, I've asked each of you to take a look at your budgets and project, um, you know, with, with the help of finance and budget, the impact, uh, not just, you know, the amount, but when, uh, so we can start doing uh, some planning for that. All right, so we have an opportunity to get an assessment of our short-term and long-term, um, our short-term and long-term projections. As I said, it was, you know, the, the uh, sequestration, I think, you know, all of us had hoped uh, would be averted, but the, it seems that as if it is a, a clever approach to spending reductions. It's triggered $85 billion in across-the-board federal spending cuts, which means millions in cuts uh, in funding for the state and the city. And cities are not in a position to fill the gaps. Uh, that's what we were very clear uh, to the uh, elected officials in Congress. We face our own $750 million cumulative shortfall over the next 10 years, and we can't continue to do the planning that we need to do uh, when we're faced with uh, things like uh, sequestration. Again, city agencies, I know I've asked you to reach out to your federal counterparts to understand the specific implications for each of your agencies, and you need to keep in constant contact, as I know you are, uh, with the feds, uh, and relay that information back to us so we can all do the planning that we need to do around the table. We know that every cut won't be immediate, but if we don't plan, we will not be able to prepare uh, for uh, you know, what's coming down the road. Each of you have, should have short-term and long-range uh, plans for how you're going to manage these funding cuts, uh, how will you decide what services to reduce, what services to cut, uh, which individuals uh, which, uh, which may have to be terminated, if, if any, which families, uh, you know, will be impacted by the loss of vital services, including daycare, including housing, because we know that some of the projected cuts are to Section 8 uh, housing services as well as uh, where we'll make the cuts when it comes to the job training, as I spoke about, which is unfortunate uh, because we have been making a lot of progress with uh, the work that we're doing in partnership, public-private partnership on job creation for young people. Uh, and this is really pulling the rug out from under us and them at a time where we've really relied on this, this, uh, these partnerships to provide more opportunities. And I would hate for us to go uh, backwards, uh, most importantly, we need to talk about and plan how we're going to inform people about um, the potential uh, loss of services. We need to keep the public informed at every step of the way as sequestration uh, begins to take uh, shape. We know that our, our budget is, uh, our operating budget is funded by a significant amount of federal dollars, 192 million, which is 12 percent of the budget. Over another 48.5 million comes from the federal government for our capital improvements. An additional $81 million comes in an operating bu budget from state grants. Some originate at the federal level, and we can talk about the dollars uh, amount, all that, all that we want, but what this is really about is how we prepare our citizens. And again, uh, for that, I'm, I'm pleased that we're joined uh, by members of the Council, because this is work that we have to do together. 
um, as the president said on Friday, not everybody is going to feel the pain from the sequestration all at once. He said it's going to hurt uh, individual people and it's going to hurt the economy overall. Um, we're talking about a loss of millions of jobs across uh, the country. Uh, based on what we know, this is, um, it will have real impact on city residents. Nationally, near than $60 million will be cut from the Department of uh, Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, or ATF, uh, impacting law enforcement operations and the industry oversight capabilities, again, which we depend on in our efforts to become a safer city. In Baltimore's ATF office, special agents oversee partnerships that combat gun violence by investigating arm armed violent offenders, career criminals, illegal gun traffickers, as well as gangs. In addition, $100 million will be cut from the budget of the U.S. Attorney's Office, and these cuts will reduce the amount of funding available from burn criminal grants, innovation program, and the drug court program that we know makes a big difference in the city. The criminal division of the U.S. Attorney's Office has 40 prosecutors, and cuts could increase the caseloads for these attorneys and prevent uh, us from being able to, to funnel cases to them that we know would make a difference in our public safety battle. Head Start could be reduced by approximately 5% or another $1.5 million, which could result in the elimination of Head Start or early Head Start services for many low-income uh, families. CDBG, Community Development Grant, Block Grants, have been scaled back in previous years, and we fought against those cuts, and now they're projected to receive an 8.2% 8, cut totaling another uh, almost $1.5 million. The HOME program could see a, uh, a $259,000 grant, grant reduction, uh, affordable un housing units, which we know we are desperate for more af affordable housing you know, at, at a time where we know that we have uh, more vulnerable people in need. Uh, these cuts would, uh, would hurt, and they would, uh, the effects would be seen right away. And we are... Uh, we're attending the groundbreaking for an event right after this that's supported by home funds and, and temporary and permanent housing for the homeless could be reduced by uh, almost $950,000. Again, these are services we know we need and uh, individuals behind those services who will not be served. The Section 8 program I mentioned is in, uh, funds are in jeopardy. These are just some of the potential cuts to education, housing, and public safety in total. Uh, the cuts could reduce funding for red line, uh, the uh, red line transit project, job training, youth jobs, emerging technology center, meals for seniors, HIV and AIDS testing, and uh, all of this to say that the cost of congressional inaction is clear and it is severe, and we need to approach it like we approach any emergency um, and uh, prepare for the worst, but hope for the best, uh, and and I hope uh, that. The spirit of cooperation and bipartisanship that the, the sequestration was supposed uh, to engender uh, takes shape because too many, too many jobs depend on it, and I, I really think the future of our country depends on our ability to show our citizens as well as the rest of the world that we can govern uh, without being forced to by, by crisis. So, again, I appreciate us coming together. Uh, today, in a moment, we're going to have an opportunity once the cameras uh, leave to go uh, agency by agency. For those dealing with the daily struggles of caring for a loved one, we hear you. That's why AARP created a community with experts and other caregivers to help us better care for ourselves and the ones we love. Full life measured in seats starts with the right ones early on. Car crashes are the number one killer of children 1 through 13. Learn how to prevent deaths and injuries by using the right car seat for your child's age and size. NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all working with United Way. 
for a million little reasons, the kids of our communities, to ensure their academic success all the way to graduation day. You see, it takes about 12 years to create a graduate, but it takes the same time to create a dropout. And the difference between a kid becoming one or the other could be a professional athlete or it could be you. Studies showed the earlier we get to kids, the better their chances. So become a United Way volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor, and make a difference in the life of a child, for the life of that child. Give. Advocate. Volunteer. Live United. Join your favorite NFL players. Take the pledge. Go to unitedway.org.